We are gonna solve 25 problems of AMC 10A 2022 American Mathematics Competitions and before the exam I will list some ideas and I want to show you how useful the ideas in my preparation videos were. So let's start from problem number one. In problem number one Let's see, it says what's the value of 3 plus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 3. It's easy, only we should calculate. Let's do it together. So, let's write 3 plus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 3. So, at first we calculate this part. 3 plus 1 over 3, if we use common denominator, it will be 3. 9, 3 times 3, 9 plus 1, 10 over 3. So it will be 3 plus 1 over 3 plus 1 over here. I write 10 over 3. So it will be 10 over 3. And it will be 3 plus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 10 over 3 will be 3 over 10. And then we can see it will be 3 plus. In the denominator, I use common denominator 10, it will be 30 plus 3, and it will be 33. So, it is equal to 3 plus 1 over 30 plus 3 is 33 over 10. So, it will be 3 plus 10 over 33. And if you use common denominator 33, 3 times 33, 99 plus 10 which will be 109 over 33, and it will be D. Let's solve second problem, problem number two of AMC 10A 2022. Mike cycled 15 laps in 57 minutes. Assume he cycled at a constant speed throughout, and approximately how many laps did he complete in the first 27 minutes? For these types of problems that we are working <clears throat> with time, speed, and constant speed especially, you should know a formula. The speed equals the, to distance over time. Why? Because, for example, you say meter or over hour and per hour. So, distance over time. Now, here in first part, suppose the path that he cycles is something like this, and suppose the length is L. Now, it says 15 laps in 57 minutes. So, we conclude V equal to 15 laps, 15 L over 57 minutes. In next part, it says approximately how many laps did he so did he complete in the first 27 minutes? So suppose it is for example x laps. So we know that v equal to x laps over it says 27 minutes. So I should find x is what? So because it has constant speed, v equal to v. So we conclude 15L over 157 equal to XL over 27. Now, we divide both sides by L. If we cross multiply, 57X equal to 15 times 27. And X equal to 15 times 27 over 57. If you want to simplify, 57 is multiple of 3. 15 is also multiple of 3. It will be 19. It will be 5. And if you multiply, it will be 135 over 19. Okay, if we use, if we divide them, 7 times 19 is 133. Then we have 2 is left. 20 divided by 19 is 1. So approximately it will be 7. So the answer is B. Let's solve problem number 3 of AMC 10A 2022. The sum of three numbers is 96. So 
let me write. So let's write these three numbers, a plus b plus c, equal to 96. So this part is okay. The first number is six times the third number. So first number is a, six times third number. And okay, it is okay. And the third number is 40 less than the second number. Okay. Third number is 40 less than second number is b minus 40. Okay, what is the absolute value of the difference between the first and second number? So we want to find a minus b absolute value of that. Okay. So here I can say c plus 40, if I take negative 40 to left hand side, equal to b. So I can, I can write a and b in terms of c in first equation. So a is 6c, b is c plus 40 plus c equal to 96. So 6c plus c plus c, we conclude it is 8c plus 40 equal to 96. We subtract 40 from both sides. It will be 8c equal to 46. I'm oh, sorry, here 96 minus 40 will be 56. Then we divide both sides by 8. c will be 7. And then because c is 7, a is 6c equal to 42. b is c plus 40, which is 47. And their difference, absolute value of a minus b, equal to 5, and the answer is e. Problem number 4 of AMC 10A2022. In some countries, automobile fuel efficiency is measured in liters per 100 kilometers, while other countries use miles per gallon. Suppose that 1 kilometer equals m miles and 1 Gallon equals L liters. Which of the following gives the fuel efficiency in liters per 100 kilometers for a car that gets X miles per gallon? Okay, so let's write, for example, a distance. It says which of the following gives the fuel efficiency in liters per 100 kilometers for a car that gets X miles per gallon? Okay, so. We consider, for example, y liters, and we want to find y liters in per 100 kilometers. So, 100 kilometers with y liters. And then it says x miles per gallon. So, x miles, you go per gallon for one gallon. And now we want to say they should be equivalent to each other. But one thing is the relationship between wise and kilometer. And one thing the relationship between gallon and liters. So let's read the problem. It says one kilometer is m miles here. One kilometer equals m miles. So you can say the relationship between x and 100 equal to 100 times m because one kilometer is m miles it will be 100 m miles okay now <clears throat> we can say in this case we have x miles in this case we have 100 m miles now the next thing one gallon equals l liters so we can say it is l liters so then we have this l liters they should be equivalent so equivalent means what the efficiency is same so if you use L liters in X miles, it is equivalent that you use Y liters in 100 miles. Now we want to find Y is what? Problem says, which of the following gives the fuel efficiency in liters? Y liters. So, you can say XY equal to, if you cross multiply L times 100 M, and then if you divide both sides by X, you can say y equal to 100 lm over x. So the answer is e. Problem number five. Square ABCD has side length one point PQ. Okay, so let's draw. We have a square ABCD with side length one. So it is our figure A, B, C, 
D. Point P, Q, R, S each lie on the side of ABCD such that QCRS is an equilateral convex hexagon with side length S. So, let me make it thicker. Okay, so here I say AP, for example, this one, all lengths should be equal. For example, Q, it says APQC. If you also try counterclockwise, I've used counterclockwise. If you use clockwise again, it will be A P Q C R S. It will be same. So something like this. It is not necessarily parallel to this one, but at the end you will see it is parallel. Okay. First, we don't know that A P Q C R S. Okay. Now it says the length of this hexagon is. Smallest, so smallest, 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 and smallest. And the side length is 1, so it will be here 1 minus s, here 1 minus s, here 1 minus s, here 1 minus s. Because it is 1, so it is s, so it will be 1 minus. All of them are same. So, here we know it is 90, because it is 1 minus s, 1 minus s, we will see it is 45. And you can say 1 minus s root 2 is s, or you can use Pythagorean theorem, or Pythagorean theorem. If I want to use that in triangle DPQ, 1 minus s squared plus 1 minus s squared equal to s squared. So... If you use, you should use this identity that x minus y squared equal to x squared minus 2xy plus y squared. So it will be 1 minus 2s plus s squared plus 1 minus 2s plus s squared equal to s squared. You subtract s squared from both sides. And then it will be what? It will be s squared minus 2s minus 2s minus 4s. And... You can do these and then try to solve a quadrilateral function, but let me tell you a better way. You can say two times 1 minus s squared equal to s squared. And then if you use square root, it will be 1 minus s times square root of 2 equal to s. So root 2 minus s root 2 equal to s. So root 2 equal to s plus s root 2. And then if you factor from s, root 2 will be s times 1 plus root 2. And if you divide both sides by 1 plus root 2, s will be equal to root 2 over 1 plus root 2. Now, if you see, all fractions are numbers, not squares. So we should rationalize. For rationalizing this, s root 2 over 1 plus root 2, we should multiply by root 2 minus 1 over root 2 minus 1. The denominator will be 2 minus 1, which is 1. Root 2 times root 2 is 2 minus root 2. 2 minus 1 is 1, so the answer is 2 minus root 2. Okay, so let's see. The right choice is C. Problem number 6. Which expression is equal to absolute value of a minus 2 minus square root of a minus 1 squared? And for a less than zero. So before solving this problem, let me tell you absolute value is what? Absolute value of two is two. Absolute value of negative three is three. It consists a positive sign. So absolute value of x. If x is greater than or equal to zero is x. If x is less than zero, negative x. And let me tell you another thing. <clears throat> if you want to know absolute value of x squared is what someone says, it is x. But let me tell you something. If you consider negative 3 squared, it will be root 9, it will be 3. So it is not negative 3x. You should say absolute value of x. So by knowing these two things, we want to solve this problem. So a minus 2, absolute value of a minus 2 minus square root of a minus 1 squared equal to what? So I can say it is a minus 2 minus here, it is exactly this part. It will be absolute value of a minus 1. 
Now, a minus 1 is positive or negative? Because a is negative, we conclude that a minus 1 is negative. So it will be a minus 2 minus absolute value of a minus 1 is 1 minus a. And then it will be equal to a minus 2 minus 1 plus a. And it will be 2a, a plus 8a, 2a minus 3. a is negative. Negative 3 also negative. So inside the absolute value is negative. So you should consider negative sign because of here. If x is negative. So it will be 3 minus 2a. So the answer is a. Problem number 7. The least common multiple of a positive integer n and 18 is 180. And the greatest common divisor of n and 45 is 15. What is the sum of the digits of n? I, before exam, I released a video. In that video, I, I, I think I've considered 11 ideas. One of the idea, I worked on a problem LCM. And I said, consider special cases, small examples. And if you saw that video, you could solve this problem easily. So let's try if you want to learn important ideas, feel free to send message to my WhatsApp number in the description and comments. Okay, the least common multiple, the least common multiple of a positive integer n and 18 is 180. The greatest common divisor of n and 45 is 15. What's the sum of the digits of it? Okay, so you should prime factorize like the video I released before exam, so you should say LCM of n and 2 times 3 squared equal to 180. Each 0 is 1, 2, 1, 5. So it will be 2 squared times 18 is multiple of 9, 3 squared times 5 because of 0. And GCD of n and 45. 45 is 9 times 5. 3 squared times 5 equal to 15, which is 3 times 5. So, from the first part, LCM. LCM considered all primes of n and 2 times 3 squared. From first part, we conclude, let me consider this one star, this one double star. By using a star, I understand that n can only have 2 to the power of x, 3 to the power of y, 5 to the power of z, and x, y, z can be or non-zero integers. We can't have 7 in n, because if you have 7 in n here, we should have 7, because it is LCM. By the definition of LCM, in LCM, we should consider the primes with maximum power. In GCD, the primes with minimum power. Okay, so, and common primes, because when we have 3, 0, 3 other ones, you should consider 3, 0, which is minimum. Now, LCM. LCM of, if I write these numbers again, 2 to the x, 3 to the y times, let's write, 3 to the y times 5 to the z, and 2 times 3 squared equal to 2 squared times 3 squared times 5. If we consider this, maximum of x and 1 here, it is power of 1, equal to 2. Maximum of y and it is power of 3, 2 equal to 2. Maximum of z, in this part we don't have any 5 and z and 0, because this is 5 to 0 is 1. So, by this part, you can easily consider x equal to 2. By this part, you can't consider x equal, y equal to 2, but you consider y is at most 2. Here, maximum is 1, z has to be 1. Okay, so, let's analyze GCD. GCD of n, which is 2x, 3y, 5z. And what number here? 3 squared times 5 equal to 3 times 5. In GCD, we consider minimum. Because we know x and y are what, x and z are what, we focus on y. Minimum of y and 2 is 1. So, you easily conclude y is 1. So, we found x, y, z. Now, we can find n. It's 2 to the x, which is 2, times 3 to the y, which is 1, times 5 to the z, which is 1. So, it will be 4 times 3 times 5 
which is 4 times 3, 12. 12 times 5, 60. Uh, let's see the problem once more. It says, what is the sum of the digits of n? So, the answer is 6 plus 0, which is 6, and the answer is B. AMC 10 a 2022 problem number 8. A data set consists of 6 not distinct positive integers 1, 7, 5, 2, 5, and x. The average arithmetic mean of the 6 numbers equals a value in the data set. What's the sum of all positive values of x? Okay, so let's see here. It says from this part, the average to this part. Okay, average of them is 1 plus 7 plus 5 plus 2 plus 5 plus x over 6. It says equals a value in the data set. So it is equal to 1 or 7 or this one 7 or 5 or 2 or 5 again. We check only once 5 or 1 time or x. Okay. So we should check 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. These five cases. Okay. 1 plus 7 is 8. 8 plus 5, 13. 13 plus 2, 15. 15 plus 5, 20. Okay, now we conclude. 20, if you multiply by 6, 20 plus 6. 20 plus x equal to 6 times 1, which is 6. 6 times 7, 42. Or 6 times 5, let me write or 42, or 6 times 5, 30, or 6 times 2, 12, or 6 times x, 6x. And the problem says they are positive integers. So 20 plus x is at least 20 plus x, 1, 21. So 6 will be bad. 12 also will be bad because it should be at least 21. Now, in next step, I want to consider different cases. I subtract 20 from both sides. So x will be 42 minus 20, 22. 30 minus 20 is 10. And uh, let's consider these two cases first. And for other case, 20 plus x equal to 6x. So in that case, I subtract by x. 20 equal to 5x. So in this case, x equal to 4 if you divide by 5. In this case, 20, 10. And let's see the problem once what? The problem says, what is the sum of all positive values of x? Okay. So the answer is 22 plus 10 plus 4, which is 32 plus 4, 36. And the answer is D. Problem number 9 of AMC 10A 2022. A rectangle is partitioned into five regions as shown. Each region is to be painted a solid color red, orange, yellow, blue, or green. So it says this region is uh, red, orange, yellow, blue, or green. So the regions that touch are painted different colors. And colors can be used more than once. How many different colorings are there? Okay. So look in these types of problem. For example, you can, you can consider one rectangle. Or if you start from here, this part has five cases. Okay. And then this part cannot be the color here. For example, we have lots of geometry if it is white. Then for example, you say here is orange, white, yellow. Then you have four cases here, not white. And this one has is adjacent to this and this. So I should have different color three. Now if you want to color this is adjacent to this one and this one. So you just select two colors will be removed. It can be all. Only, for example, if we have here blue, it can be all things except white and blue, yellow and blue. So it has three cases. This one is adjacent to these two things. Three. So the answer is five times four times three times three times three. Five times four is 20. Three times three times three, 27. So it will be 540. Okay, and let's see the choices. The answer is D. 
Problem number 10, AMC 10, A2022. Okay, Daniel finds a rectangular index card and measures its diagonal to be 8 centimeters. Daniel then cuts out equal squares here of side 1 centimeter and two opposite corners of the index card and measures between the two closest vertices of these squares to be 4 root 2 here. Centimeters as shown below. What is the area of the original index card? Okay, so let's solve. Okay. Again, in this problem also, we should use Pythagorean theorem. How? I connect... Let me minimize this. Look, I consider this... Ah, uh, let's at first consider the main rectangle. This one this one so if we consider this side is a so let me write it is a it is one it is a minus one and if the whole length is b we can say it is b minus one and it is one now in next step i draw this one also i draw this one to use one pythagorean theorem so, for 8, I use this squared plus this squared. So, a squared plus b squared equal to 8 squared. Now, in next step, I use this part. The length here is what? It's a minus 2. Because if you extend here, it is 1 equal 1 equal 1. And then you will say, okay, it is 1. It is 1, so this part is a minus 2. And similarly, you can say if it is 1, we can say the middle is b minus 2, here 1. So a minus 2, here b minus 2. a minus 2 squared plus b minus 2 squared equal to 4 root 2 squared. Now, maybe you think that you should find a and b, but the problem doesn't want a and b. So it's so much important to also pay attention to what the problem wants. It says what's the area. Area of the original index card is a b equal to what? So let's expand. In first line, we have a squared plus b squared equal to a squared, which is 64. In second line, a minus 2 squared is a squared minus 4a plus 4 plus b squared minus 4b plus 4 equal to 4 root 2 squared, which is 16 times 2, 32. So and we want to find a b. From first part, we know this. Let's simplify here. a squared plus b squared minus 4a minus 4b plus 4 plus 4, 8. If you take 8 to right hand side, 32 minus 8, 24. Now we know a squared plus b squared from first part equal to 64. So if I take these two to right hand side, these two left hand side, 64 minus 24 equal to 4a plus 4b. 64 minus 24 equal to 40. And if we divide both sides by 4, we conclude a plus b equal to 10. Now, we know a plus b is what? We know a squared plus b squared is what? We want a, b. So, if we raise this to the power of 2, a plus b squared equal to 10 squared. Now, we can conclude a squared plus b squared plus 2ab equal to 100. A squared plus B squared here is 64. So we can say it's 64. So 2AB, if you take 64 to right hand side, 100 minus 64, 36. So we conclude AB equal to 18. And the answer will be E. Problem number 11, AMC 10, A2022. 10. Ted mistakenly wrote 2 to the m times square root of 1 over 1496 as 2 times mth root of 1 over 1496. What is the sum of all the real numbers m for which these two expressions have the same value? Okay, so let 2 to the m, the first term, they should be equal times square root of 1 over 1496. Let's simplify this. It will be 2 to the m square root of 1 over 1496. It's good to memorize 2 to the power of 
something powers of 2 up to 2 to the power of 16. If we calculate this, it will be 2 to the power of 12. And because here we have square root, it will be 2 to the m times 1 over 2 to the 6. We should divide the power by 2 because we have square root. And then it will be 2 to the m minus 6. The next term is 2 times m root of 1 over 40, 96. And it will be 2 times 1 over 2 to the 12. Because it is m root, it will be to the power of 1 over m. So it will be 2 times 1 over 2 to the power of 12 m. So it will be 2 to the power of 1 minus 12 over m. Now, when they are equal, the powers should be equal. Know this, that if 2x equal to 2 to the y, x equal to y. So, because the problem says they should be equal, we conclude m minus 6 equal to 1 minus 12 over m. We multiply both sides by m. It will be m squared minus 6m equal to m minus 12. If we take all things to left hand side, m squared minus 7m plus 12 equal to 0. Now, the problem says for which two? It says what is the sum of all real values? In my video before the exam, I've released. I told you some of the roots, some of the answers here. If you want to calculate, it will be negative b over a, which will be 7. Or we can also call it Vieta's formula. If you saw that video before exam I released, you could say this easily. And the answers are real, because if you calculate delta or d, it's b squared minus 4ac, negative 7 squared minus 4 times 12, which is 49 minus 48, which is 1. Okay. We don't need to calculate the roots, you can also calculate the roots by quantity formula or factorization. But because it wants only some of the roots and the real numbers, the answer is 7. Okay, so the answer will be C. Problem number 12, AMC 10A, 2022. On Halloween, 31 children walk into the principal's office asking for candy. They can be classified into three types. Some always lie, some always tell the truth, and some alternately lie and tell the truth. The alternators arbitrarily choose the first response, either a lie or the truth. But each subsequent statement has the opposite truth value from its predecessor. And the principal asks everyone the same three questions in this order. First one, are you a truth teller? The principal gave a piece of candy to each of the 22 children who answered yes. Are you an alternator? The principal gave a piece of candy to each of the 15 children who answered yes. The last one, are you a liar? The principal gave a piece of candy to each of the nine children who answered yes. And let's go to the sports. Okay, it says now, how many pieces of candy in all did the principal give to the children who always tell the truth? Okay, so let's consider the people truth teller, alter, alternator, truth teller, alternator and liar so we want to see the answer like what so let's consider liar first because we have two types of alternator so in first part it asks are you so we have how many questions we have three questions okay it is q1 q2 q3 so in Q1, we want to see, they say what for Q2, for Q3. So, truth teller, first time they ask, are you a truth teller? He answers, yes. Are you an alternator? Because truth teller always say 
truth. So he says no. Also for Q3, he says no. Lie always say lie. Uh, so are you a truth teller? He says yes. Are you an alternator? He says yes. Are you a liar? Because he, he lies. So you should say no. Now alternator. We have two types of alternator. The first type that is A1, that's A2. A1, start with truth. Start with truth. And A2, second type of alternator, start with lie. Okay, so let's consider the cases. The first one starts with truth. Are you a truth teller? He should say the truth. No, because he is alter alternator. Are you an alternator? He won't. He should say a lie. He is alternator, so he should say no. Here he should tell the truth. Are you a liar? No. Now second type. All of them will be yes. Are you a truth teller? He should say a lie. Yes. Are you an alternator? He should say truth. Yes. Are you a liar? He should say the. He should lie, so he says yes. Now, we can say if we have, for example, the number of TLA1, A2, the number of them, at the end we want to see what, uh, how many pieces of candy and all did the principal give to the children who always tell the truth. We want to find the number of candies that the principal gave them. So, the truth teller only get candies in Q1. So we should find the number of truth teller because in one question they get candies. So we want to find T is what. Now, let's see in first question, how many students said yes, 22. So 22 is Q1 plus L plus A2. Q1 plus L plus A2 is 22. Now for 15. Who says yes to question number 2? L plus A2. L plus A2 is 15. For question number 3, 9. A2 is 9. So because A2 is 9, L will be 6. Because L6, A2, 9, 6 plus 9, 15. Q1 will be 7. Okay? Now that we find, oh, sorry, 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 why I said here Q1. I meant T. Okay, so here L plus A2 is 15. You conclude that T is 7. So you should want to find T is what the answer is A, which is 7. Okay, problem number 13 of 2022 AMC 10A. It says, let triangle ABC be a scaling triangle. All sides are different. Point P lies on BC. So that AP by 6. Uh, in this problem, we want to use the idea I told you before exam. I released a video. There are around 40, 50 important formulas in geometry. We want to use some of them. I released some of them. If you want to know all of them, you feel free to send message to my WhatsApp number. Okay, so let's start. We have triangle ABC here. And then it says P is such that AP by 6. BAC is A half, A half. The line through B perpendicular to AP intersect the line. Okay, so let me draw that. Okay, through B perpendicular to AP intersects the line and uh, through A parallel to BC. This one at what point at point D. Suppose BP is 2, BC is 3, what is AD? Okay, for example, I told you before exam, BP, know this formula, AC over B plus C, this one is AB over B plus C in terms of size of triangle and look one thing that is important when you have a over two these are the formulas i told you that it's good to memorize also in aim is so much useful a half a half then it is angle bisector let me call this t 
In triangle ABT, this line is angled by sector and also altitude, so it is isosceles triangle. It is C, it is C. This part is B, so it will be B minus. Now, here, C, we want to find AD. We know triangle, because it is parallel to this, this angle equal to this angle. This angle equal to this angle, so by two angles, I can say these two triangles, triangle ATD and triangle BTC. They are similar triangles, BTC. So I can say AD over 3 plus 2, which is 5, equal to AT over TC. AT is C, TC is B minus C. Now, I know that AD is what? AD is 5 times C over B minus. By angle bisector theorem that I told you this formula from that, we know that this side, AB, which is C, over B equal to 2 over 3. So you can use it here with different ways you can prove. One way is that uh, it's good to learn something new if you don't know this. When you say B minus 3, you say denominator minus numerator. You use the same thing here. 2 over 3 denominator minus numerator. It will be 2 over 3 minus 2. So 3 minus 2 denominator minus numerator, which will be 2 over 1, which is 2. So it will be 5 times 2, which equal to 10, and the answer is C. Okay, so as you can see, it depends on the problem. If we have here, like... Internal angle by sector, you should know the length, the ratios in perpendicular by sectors, the altitude. So these formulas are so much useful. If you want to learn them, feel free to send a message. My WhatsApp number in the description and comments. Problem number 14, AMC 10A, 2022. How many ways are there to split the integers 1 through 14 into 7 pairs such that in each pair the greater number is at least two times the lesser number. Okay, so let's write the numbers 1, 2 to 14. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay, so if for each subset, for example, a smaller one, lesser one is L1, greater one G1, and for a subset L2, G2, then we have L7, G7. It says here, the greater number is at least two times the lesser number. So G1 is at least two times L1. G2 is at least two times L2. G7 is at least two times L7. Okay. So, um, can lesser number be 10? No. Because if it is, if for example, Li is 10, then greater 1, Gi should be at least 20, but it's not possible. So, we understand that 10 should be greater 1 if it is in a subset similarly 11 and 12, 13, 14, also 9, also 8. But 7, we can't say, 8 we can't say, because if a lesser number is 8, then 2 times 8 is 16. GI should be at least 16, but we have up to 14. Now we have seven numbers here. They should be greater one in each subset. So, because we have seven, exactly seven G1 to G7, so all others should be LLL, lesser one. Now, let's consider. In the subset that the greatest one is eight, so, lesser one can be what numbers? Look, here we can say, let me erase these things. L1 is at least, at most, G1 over 2. So, for Li, it's at most Gi over 2. So, if the greatest one is 8, then, for example, without loss of generality, suppose it is in G1. So, L1 has to be at most 8 over 2, 4. So it can be 1, 2, 3, 4. If I consider 9, L2, L2 is at most 9 over 2. It can be only 1, 2, 3, 4. L3, 10. L3 can be, is at most 10 over 2, 5. So it can be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 
L4, 10, it's at most 11, it's at most 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, L4 can be these numbers, L5, 12, L5 can be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, L6 and 12 and 13, L6 can be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and the last one, L7 and 14, L7 can be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7. Okay, so let's analyze this. Here in L1, you can select any of them, four cases, times. Here, because you've selected one of them for L1, that one will be removed for L2, so you have three cases. Now, when you reach L3, two of them has been removed because you've selected for L1, L2. So five minus two, three cases. This one, five minus three, two. This one, six, but you've selected four of them, it will be two times. Six, you've selected five of them, one times. You have seven cases, but you've selected six of them. You've selected six of them times one. One, one, two, two. So if you multiply two, two, four, four times four, sixteen, sixteen times three times three, nine, which is one, four, four. So the answer is E. We've solved also one similar problem. You see that always, for example, L1 has this number of cases, L2, it is useful. And you multiply like this. Okay. If you have question about any problem, any solution, you can send message, feel free. Send message to my WhatsApp number in the description and comments. AMC 10A, problem number 15, 2022. It says quadrilateral ABCD with side length. Okay, let's draw. Okay, ABCD is this, AB7, BC24, CD20, DA15. Is inscribed in a circle the area interior to the circle but exterior to the quadrilateral, so it means this area. It says this area can be written in the form a pi minus b over c, where a, b, and c are positive integers such that a and c have no common prime factor, which is a plus b plus c. Okay. So look here, if you want to find this area, it will be area of circle, which is pi r squared minus area of a, b, c, d. So we should use, find two things. r is what circumradius a, b, c, d. So circumradius, for example, one formula here is not useful, but you can see that it's so much useful in other problems, also in USAMO, in AMI, in other problems of AMC, it depends on the problem, you should know these things. Exactly, before the exam, I released a video preparation, and in that video I said pay attention to cosine rule, and here we need exactly to use cosine rule. How? If I draw this diagonal, it's AC. Now, I say it is alpha, and because it is alpha, it is 180 minus alpha, because the sum of two angles in an inscribed quadrilateral is 180. So, if I use cosine rule, in, or law of cosine in triangle A, cos alpha. Now, in the next triangle, if I use cosine rule in triangle ADC, it will be AC squared equal to 15 squared, plus 20 squared minus 2 times 15 times 20 times cos 180 minus alpha. And you should know that cos alpha equal to negative cos 180 minus alpha. Or cos 180 minus alpha is equal to negative cos alpha. Now, because AC squared equal to AC squared, we conclude 7 squared plus 24 squared minus 2 times 7 times 24 times cos alpha equal to 15 squared plus 20 squared, because it is negative cos alpha, we said, it will be plus 2 times 15 times 20 times cos alpha. So, here, 7 squared is what? 49. 20, or let's do something. Let's take these squares to left-hand side and these to right-hand side. So, 7 squared minus 15 squared plus 24 squared minus 20 squared equal to 2 times, let's factor from cos alpha, or let's factor from 2 cos alpha, it will be 15 times 20 plus 7 times 24. Now, 
7 squared minus 15 squared will be 7 minus 15, negative 8, 7 plus 15, 22. This one, 24 minus 20 is 4, 24 plus 20 is 44. So it will be 4 times 6, 4 times 4, 16. We have 1, 4 times 4, 16 plus 1, 1, this. And this one will be what? It is this. So it will be 0. And obviously, because it is not 0, we can't call it cos alpha is 0. So if you pay attention to unit circle, cos is this. So when cos is 0, it should be here. So alpha is 90. So that's so much good. We we'll conclude that alpha is 90, alpha is 90. Now, here, we conclude AC's diameter. So if you want to calculate AC, AC squared is 15 squared plus 20 squared, which will be 225 plus 220 squared, 400, 625. So AC will be 25. So 2R is 25. So R is 25 over 2. Now, if you want to calculate, it will be pi r squared here. I said pi r squared, which will be pi 25 over 2 squared minus area of ABC. The area of ABC is area of this triangle, this triangle. Because they are right angle triangle, it's so much easier to subtract them. So it will be 50 times 20 over 2, the first triangle, and the next triangle, 17 times 24 over 2. So let's subtract and see the result will be what? It will be 525 squared is 625. So let me write 625 over 4 pi minus. 2, 2, it will be 10. It will be 150. 2, this 12. 7 times 12 will be 84. And this one will be 2, 3, 4. So let's see the problem once exactly what. It says a pi minus b over c. Okay. So here it will be 4. 6 to 5 pi minus 4 times this and it wants a plus b plus okay 4 times 4 16 we have 1 4 times 3 12 13 we have 1 it will be 9 so a is this part it says a pi minus b over c so it will be b it will be c so a plus b plus c let's see it is what a plus B plus C, it will be 625 plus 936 plus 4. So 4 plus 6, 10, 15. We have 1. It will be 6. It will be 15. So it will be 1565. So let's see. 1565, the choice is D. AMC 10A2022, problem number 16. The roots of the polynomial... 10x cubed minus 39x squared plus 29x minus 6 are the height, length, and width of a rectangular box, right rectangular prism, and now a new rectangular box is formed by lengthening each edge of the original box by two units. What is the volume of the new box? Because we are working with the roots here, you should use you should use Vietas formula exactly before the exam. I release this uh, video preparation. And in that video, I've explained Vietas formula. And here we want to use that. So it's important to know important ideas. And if you want to learn all ideas useful in this step, next steps and other exams, feel free to send message to my WhatsApp number in the description and comments. Okay, so let's see. It says rectangular prism and... We increase each side by 2. So, the roots, suppose, let me write, it is 10x cubed minus 39x squared plus 29x minus 6. It will be 10 times x minus r1, the first root, x minus r2, x minus r3. And we have a cube, the length or r1 plus 2, r2 plus 2. Or 3 plus 2. And because we want to find the volume, so we should find R1 plus 2 times R2 plus 2 times R3 plus 2. And it will be, if we calculate, it will be R1, R2, R3 plus uh, 2, R1, R2 plus R1, R3 plus R2, R3 and plus 4 times R1 plus R2 plus R3 plus 8. 
So, we want to calculate this. Now we have a formula that exactly the day before exam I've explained, you should consider the for example, coefficient of x squared. On left hand side it will be 39, on right hand side it will be 10 times negative r1, negative r2, negative r3. So you conclude r1 plus r2 plus r3 equal to, here it will be, you can conclude the right side is 1 over 3, a over 9 plus b over 9 plus c over 9. And let me tell you how to solve for 3 numbers below bar. So you say w equal to 0 abc or 0 point abc 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 and so on. And you say 1000 w equal to abc point abc abc and so on. If you subtract 1000 w minus w is 999 w equal to abc. abc is not product, it's a number. So now here, I know it is number, so I write W equal to ABC over uh, 999. You can write, for example, like this, that it is a number, not product. So this part will be ABC over 999. Now I want to simplify. 999, I can multiply both sides by 27 by yes by 27 so left hand side will be a b c over if you divide by 9 it will be 1 1 1 if you divide by 3 it will be 3 37 equal to right side will be a plus b plus c now if we multiply both sides by 37 or cross multiply a b c equal to 37 a plus 37b plus 37c. Now, here the problem says what? The problem says how many three-digit positive integers a, b, c are there to satisfy. So, this equation. Because c is in ones digit, it will be c. b is in tens digit, it will be 10. B, a is in hundreds digit, it will be 108 equal to 70, 37a plus 37b plus 37c. So 37a plus 100a is 63a equal to 37b plus 10b is 27b plus 37c plus minus c is 36c. Okay, here we will see these numbers and we will see that all of them are multiple of 9. So if I divide both sides by 9, it will be 7a equal to 3b plus 4c. Okay, now, if I consider, look, you can consider all cases, but one good thing that you can check is, for example, consider, because if you want to decrease the number of cases, consider mod something. And before the exam, I said modula is important, like here. If you consider mod 3, 7a is congruent to 3b plus 4c because they are equal. Why do I consider 3? Because they, 3b will be cancelled. 7 is 1, mod 3. A4, C4 is 1, so A is congruent to C mod 3. Now, one thing that if A equal to B, because it is 3, it is 4, if A equal to B equal to C, it will be okay. So, we can say 1, 1, 1 to 9, 9, 9. So, here we have 9 cases. Now, we know that A and C should be congruent mod 3. So, if A is 1, C can be on. We don't check the equality because if a c equal, then a equal b equal c. We've checked these nine cases. So c mod 3 is 1. So c can be 4. And c can be the other number. Okay, it, it is 1, 4, 1, 7. Now, if it is 1, 4, 7 minus 16 is bad. b will be negative. If it is 1, 7, again, it will be bad. So let's check a 2. If a is 2, c is, for example, 5 or something like this, again, b will be negative for 5. If you select here a3, it will be 21. So again, c, because it says the problem says they are not 0, who is not 0. Okay, so if it is 3, then c cannot be 0. So if 3 is 3, they are equal, we said they shouldn't be equal. If you select 6, then again, it will be negative. Also, 9 will be negative. If a is 4, 
C can be 1 or C can be 7. So 7 times 4, 28. 28 minus 4 times C, which is minus 4, is 24. 24 over 3 is 8. So one answer we found here. It's good. 4, 4. 7 times 4, 28. 4 times 7, 28. B will be 0, which is bad. Now, if you take A5, C will be 2 or 5, 8. 7 times 5, 35. 35 minus 8 will be 27. 27 over 3 is 9. One other answer. 7 times 5, 35. Minus 4 times 8, 32. 35 minus 32 is 3. 3 over 3 is 1. So we found another answer. Let's check A is 6. If A is 6, then B, C can be 3 or 9. 7 times 6, 42. 42 minus 12, which will be uh, 30. B will be 10. It's bad also. The next one will be, let's check, 42 minus 4 times 9, 36. 42 minus 36 is 6. And uh, 6 divided by 3 is 2. Okay, let's check A7. So we found one good answer again, 7. Then C is 1 or C is 4. But the first one, 7 times 7, 49. Minus 4 is 45. 45 over 3, 15 is bad. The next one, 7, 49, 49 minus 16, which will be 39, 33 is 11. It's bad again. And if you check all the other answers, you will see that. B will be greater than 9. Let's take the two cases that are left. 8 here is 2. Let me write the equation here. 7A, 3B, 4C. 7A, 3B, 4C. So, if it is 8, it is 2, then 56 minus 8 which will be 48, 48 over 3, which will be 16 is bad. If it is 8, it is 5, so you say 56 minus 20, which will be 36, 36 over 3, which will be 12 is bad. If it is 9, then it will be 3 or 6. 9, 3, 63 minus 12 will be 51, 17 is bad. 63 minus 24 will be 39, 39 is 13, so all of them will be bad. So let's count 9 here, 10, 11, 12, 13. So the answer for this problem is 13, and the answer is D. Okay, problem number 18, AMC 10, A2022. Let TK be the transformation of the coordinate plane that first rotates the plane K degrees counterclockwise around the origin and then reflects the plane across the y-axis. What's the least positive integer n such that performing the sequence of transformations t1, t2, t3, 2, tn returns the point 1, 0 back to itself. For solving this problem, I use complex numbers. It has also other solutions. But with complex numbers, it's a little easier. If you don't know complex numbers is what or want to learn other ideas, as I said before, feel free to send a message to my WhatsApp number in the description and comments. Okay, so let's jump into the solution. Okay, if we draw x, y coordinates. Now, when we rotate, for example, k degree counterclockwise, if we write in polar form, for example, if it's r, it is theta, you write it in polar form R E I theta. Now, if you A, reflect the plane across the y axis. So let's consider reflection across the y axis separately. If we do that, let's see what happens. So suppose, for example, it is R E I theta, then if you reflect it, for example, it is theta, so we conclude it is theta. So this angle is 180 minus theta, and you can conclude for all other cases it will be like this. REI 180 minus theta. Okay, now 1, 0 is what? At first, we should consider that. So 1, 0 is this point. So it is 1, EI, the angle is 0. So it is 1, exactly 1, if you want to show that. It says back to itself. By the things, we see that R won't change. So we should only focus on the angle. So at first, it is EI0. So the first time, the angle is 0. 
after, so in T1, we want to see what happens. We rotate one degree, so the angle will be one. And then we consider, we reflect across the y-axis. Their sum should be 180, like theta 180 minus theta 179 degree. Okay, it is T1. And it says, find the minimum end that one zero back to itself. So we should find zero again. In T2, again, you add here. You add by one here, you add by two because it is T2. It will be 181. And then this plus what is 180? Negative one. So it is T2. Now, in next step, we add by three, it will be two. And this plus what is 180? 178. It is T3. We add by 4, it will be 182, and this plus what is 180? Negative 2. It is T4. Like the um, before exam, the video I released, I said, consider a small example, a special case. So I am writing, for example, T4, T5, T6, to Then you understand completely we should do what? Plus 5 will be 3. 3 plus what is 180? With 177. It is what? It is T5. Now let's check T6 plus 6. It will be 183. And then this plus what is 180 is negative 3. It is what? It is T6. So let's check what happens here. I want to reach 0 again. So one number is 179. The next one, 178. It is decreasing. 177. If we reach 0, it's okay. But let's see the other types of numbers here we see in this sequence. 181, and next to 182, it is increasing. 183, now, last one, negative 1, and negative 2, negative 3, and in other case, 1, 2, 3. So if you check 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, if it wants to reach 360 it takes too much for negative one also negative one negative two negative three it will be because it happens in on what numbers in t2 t4 t6 so you can see that one we reach one in what in t1 we reach two in t3 in t5 uh, let me tell you for each of them we'll reach 360 in what Negative 1, we reach in T2. We reach in T4. For negative 2, for negative 3, we reach in T6. And the other one, 179. Let's consider that. We write it here. 179. It is in T1. Then 178. It is in T3. 1. 77 it will be in t5 and we want to see in what t will we reach zero and the next one 181 it is in t2 182 it is in t4 183 it is in t5 so look here we need to reach 360 so let's see which of them is better because here we need 360 steps to reach it will be 1, it will be 3. If you want to calculate, it will be 2 times 3, 6 minus 1. So it will be 2 times 70, 720 minus 1, 719. Also, if you want to calculate here, it will be T hundred T sub 720. Now, here if you want to see when we reach 0, we will see in T what we will reach 0. T1, T3, it's minus 1. 178, 177, because they are 1, 3, they are adding by 2, they are subtracting by 1. If you answer 3 minus 1, 2 over 2, 1, then it will be 170 minus 2. So, for example, 5 minus 1, 4 over 2, 2 is minus 2. So, if you answer Tn, you say n minus 1 over 2, 179 minus 2. Look, for example, 3 minus 1. 5 minus 1, 4 over 2, 2, 179 minus 2. So 179 minus n minus 1 over 2. It will be what? It will be 2. 
uh, 358 plus 1. Here, minus n plus 1 should be 0. Because here we've reached. So, n here is 359. Now, let's check this one to see which of them reach. Earlier, oh, I'm sorry, it is not T5, it is T6. In T6, we will reach this. So, here, as you can see, it is, uh, again, if we want to use that, you say 181 plus, look, 4 minus 2 over 2, 6 minus 2, 4 over 2, 2, 180 plus. You say, for example, if it is M, M minus 2 over 2 plus 181 is 360. So if you multiply by 2, it will be 362 plus m minus 2, equal to 360. So if we subtract, we conclude, oh, sorry, multiply by 2, 720. So m minus 2 is 360 plus m equal to 720. So m equal to 360. So now it says find the minimum n. We see that 359 is the smallest one. And also, without calculating, these two things were obvious. And you could say that, okay, 183 is 177 here. You reach negative 3. And this is plus 3, 180 plus 3. You T5s are better, and you need to only calculate this intuitively. So the answer is 359, and the answer is A. Okay, we've used complex numbers. AMC 10 a 2022 problem number 19. Define ln as the least common multiple LCM of all the integers from 1 to an inclusive. There is a unique integer edge such that 1 over 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3 2 1 over 17 equal to h over l sub 17. What is the remainder when h is divided by 17? Okay, here... At first, we should focus on finding L17. L17 is LCM of 1, 2, 3, 2, 17. So, 2 to the power of what is maximum 1? Because we have 16 is 2 to the power of 4. 3 to the power of what? We have 9, not 27, so 3 squared. 5, we don't have 25, so 5 times 7 times 11 times 13 times 70. Now, if you want to calculate 1 over 1, for example, plus 1 over 2, plus 1 over 3, plus 1 over 16, plus 1 over 17. And if you use this common multiple, this common multiple, this, 2 to the 4 times 3 squared times 5 times 7 times 11 times 13 times 17. So the first and 1, let me call this one L17. The first and will be L17. All of them. The second term, because we have 1 over 2, it will be only L17 over 2. And for 16, it will be L17 over 16. And it will be plus... For 1 over 17, it will be L17 over 17. And now, if we calculate this, it is H. The numerator is H, L17. It wants to find the remainder of h when divided by 17. You can easily say, see that because L17 is multiple of 17, so this part is multiple of 17, this part because they are only divided by something that is not multiple of 17. So because the numerator is multiple of 17, the denominator is not multiple of 17 for each of them. So each part is an integer that is multiple of 17. So it will be 17q plus L17 over 17. It is H. So for remainder, finding the remainder, I should find only L17 over 17, the remainder of this number. So L17 over 17 equal to what? Equal to 2 to the 4 times 3 squared times 5 times 7 times 11 times 13. Now, for finding the remainder when divided by 17, one way is to multiply and divide. One way is to use modula. Exactly before the exam, when we've solved some modular problems, you can use that. So, 2 to the 4 is 16, 3 squared is 9, 
5, 7, 11, 13. Let's calculate this number mod 17. So if you want to calculate, 16 is negative 1. For 9, I write 9. 5, I write 5. 7. And 11, I write negative 6. You can subtract 17 from each of them because 17 is 0 mod 17. And if you add or subtract, it has no effect. So 11 minus 17 is negative 6. 13 minus 17 is negative 4. Now, 9 times 5 is 45. 45 minus 17, if you subtract 34, it will be 11. 11 times 7, 77. 77 mod 17 is... 4 times 17 is 68. So, if you subtract 68, it will be 9. Now, negative 6 times 84, 24. 24 mod 17 is 7. 7 times 9 is 63. 63 mod 17, if you subtract 68, it will be negative 5. Negative, negative 5 will be 5. So, the answer of this problem is C. If you have questions about the solution of this problem or other problems, as I said before, feel free to send a message to my WhatsApp number in the description and comments. AMC 10A 2022 problem number 20. Four terms, four term sequence is formed by adding each term of a four term arithmetic sequence of positive integers to the corresponding term of a four term geometric sequence of positive integers. The first three terms of the resulting four-term sequence are 57, 60, and 91. What is the fourth term of this sequence? Okay, at first, let's consider arithmetic. We can say it is a, a plus d, a plus 2d, a plus 3. It says they are integers, positive integers. So you conclude. All these four should be integers, so A should be positive integer, the first term. D is integer. Why? Because, for example, look, maybe we have 55, for example, negative 10, 45, negative 10, 35. The terms are positive, but D is negative 10. Okay, so we can't say D is positive integers. So, geometric mean, geometric sequence, call this one B, B, Q, B, Q squared, B, Q, Q. Now here, we can say B is also integer. And because B is integer, then multiply, we multiply by Q, and all these terms should be also integer. Now, first thing we say, it says we add these terms. The first term is A plus B. The second term is A plus D plus BQ. The third term is A plus 2D plus BQ squared. The fourth term is A plus 3D plus BQ cubed. Now it says the first three terms are 57, 60, 91, 57, 60, 91. And the last term, which is the fourth term, we want to find it is what? Okay. If we write the equations here, A plus B is 57. A plus D plus BQ is 60. A plus 2D plus BQ squared equal to 91. Now, in first section, we say, if you subtract these two terms, it will be D plus BQ minus B equal to 3. If we subtract these two terms, it will be D plus BQ squared minus BQ equal to 31. Now here, if we subtract again, BQ squared minus BQ minus bq plus b equal to 31 minus 3 which is 28. Now here, these two things will be negative 2bq. If we factor from b, it will be q squared minus 2q plus 1 equal to 28. Now, next term, b times q minus 1 squared equal to 28. And we want to find bq. So, here you can consider b is 28, 2 minus 1 squared is 1 squared is 1. If um, q is 2, if q is 3, it will be 4, 2 minus 1 squared. 
and this will be 7 if q is greater than that for example like if q is 4 it will be 9 if q is 5 it will be 16 it's not possible so we should consider these two cases case 1 let's write b q a d these 28 q minus 1 squared is 1 so we consider q is positive and it should be 2. And the next one, 7, 4. So because a plus b is 57, in this case, a will be 20, 30, 29. And in this case, it will be 50. And d. If we want to calculate here, we use this part. For calculating it, we I calculate this one. D will be 60 minus A minus 29 minus D. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. 60 minus A, which is 29, minus BQ. BQ is 56. So it will be 60 minus 29 will be 31. 31 minus 56 will be negative 525. Okay? So, in next term, D will be 60 again, minus A, which is 50, minus BQ. BQ is 7 times 4, 28. 60 minus 50 will be 10. 10 minus 28 is negative 8. Sorry, here I've made a mistake. Q minus 1 squared is 4, so Q minus 1 is 2. Q is 3, not 4. So let's consider this part, 3. And then if we calculate this, D here will be 60 minus 8, minus 15, minus BQ. BQ will be what? 21. So 60 minus 50, 10, 10 minus 21, negative 11. So let's check these two cases. In the first case... A, we have A, A plus D, A plus D. Okay, in the first case, case number one, case number two. In case number one, A plus D will be four, and A plus 2D will be negative because you subtract 25, so it's not possible. Let's consider second case. Second case, A, A plus D, A plus 2D, A plus 3D. If I write all of them, they will be 50, 50 minus 11, 40, 39, 28, 17. And the next one is B, B, Q, B, Q squared, B, Q, Q. So B is what in second case? 7. When you multiply it by Q, 21. Multiply it by 3, 63. Multiply by 3, 3, 9. It is this. Now. If you add these terms, the first term is 51, the problem says the next one is 50, 60, it's okay. The next one, 80, 88, 91, it's okay. And the fourth term, 7 plus 9, 16, we have 1, 1 plus 8 plus 1, 0, 2, 0, 6. So, let's check. The answer is E. AMC 10A 2022, problem number 21. A bowl is formed by attaching four regular hexagon of side 1, so all these things should be 1. Regular hexagon of side 1 to a square of side 1. Okay, so all these lengths should be 1. This 1, 1, 1 here. Let me write all 1s. On this part is not necessarily 1. This hexagon, this one, 1, 1, 1. This one, 1, 1. I've written all 1s that were possible. Okay, also this Length this one. Now, in next step, it says uh, the edges of adjacent hexagon coincide like this, as shown in the figure. What's the area of the octagon? Octagon. If I want to show you, it is this: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, equal to seven. So the answer is B. AMC ten A twenty twenty two problem number twenty two. Suppose that 13 cards numbered 1, 2, 3 to 13 are arranged in a row. The task is to pick them up in numerically increasing order 
working repeatedly from left to right in the example below cards 1 to 3 are picked up. On the first pass, uh, let me show you how. Look, it says we start from 1. 1 is good. We select 1 in first steps. First step. Then 2 is on right of 1. It, it, they shouldn't be necessarily adjacent. So we select also 2 in first step. We select 3. But 4 is on the left of 3. So in first step, we take 1, 2, 3. Now, in second step, let's see, we took what? We start from 4, the next number, it's in second step, 2, 4, 5, 6 is on not right, it is here. So 6 should be in its next pass. So 4, 5 here, we've selected now. 6 is here, but 7 is on the left. So we can only select 6, like here. Then we select 4, we select 8, we select 9, we select 10, but 11 is on the left. So here, 7, 8, 9, 10 in fourth path, pass, and 5, 11, 12, 13 in fifth pass, we select 11, 12, 13. So it takes five paths. And then it says for how many of the 13 factorial possible ordering of the cards will the 13 cards be picked up in exactly two passes? Okay, when it says two passes, it means what? You start from 1, you select 1. Then, for example, you select 2, you select, there are some cards between them. You select 3, up to the cards, for example, you select A. Then here, A plus 1 is not on the right. You stop here, in first pass. A plus 1 can be any place here, for example, maybe it is here, A plus 1, A plus 2, and up to the last one, which is 13. So, 1 should be before 2, 2 should be before 3, 3 should be before 4, before a minus 1, a minus 1 before a. And also a plus 1 should be before a plus 2, should be before a plus 3, should be before up to 13. But a shouldn't be before a plus 1, a plus 1 should be before a. So it should be like this. Now we want to solve how many permutations are there to place them. So, here, at first, I solve this problem for the case, copy, for the case that we don't have this middle edge. So how many cases are there? There are 13 places, 1, 2, 13. We select 13, choose A from them, and then the order will be unique, and the others also will be unique. A plus 1 to 13. But the bad case is what? The bad case is if A plus 1 is after A. So you should subtract this case, which is 1 minus 1. And now A can be what? A can be from 1 to 13. Oh, no, 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 no. It cannot be 13. Because look, for example, 1 is okay. In first pass, you select 1, 2 to 12. Because we have two paths, two paths, you should A is at most 12. Because if A is 13, you select them in one pass. So A is between 1 and So it will be 13, choose 1. You can solve it with sigma or write all of them. Plus 13, choose 2, minus 1. Plus 13, choose 3, minus 1. Plus up to 13, choose 12, minus 1. Now I want to calculate this term. So, here I say, I know that 13 choose 0. Let me write 13 choose 0. Plus 13 choose 1. Plus 13 choose 2. To 13 choose 13. Okay. We know this is 2 to the power of 30. But we don't have 0, 13 choose 0, so I subtract. We don't have 13 choose 13, I subtract also this part. And how many negative 1s are there? Negative 1, negative 1, negative 1 is negative 12. So it will be 2 to the power of 13 minus 1, minus 1, minus 12. 2 to the power of 13 is this minus 14. Which will be 8, 180, 78. 
So 8178. Let's see 8178. The answer is D. Look, solving these types of problems are so much useful if you learn. For example, someone says we want to arrange, we want to place one, two, for example, three, four. As homework, try to solve this. Five, six, seven, eight, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Here, before nine, before ten, before eleven, before twelve. Okay, so it says try to arrange one, two, twelve in a row, such that, for example, when one has an arrow to two. It means that one is on the left of two and also for other elements. How many ways are there? You can comment your answers below this video. Also, if you want to learn these types of problems, it has two points for solving all these types of problems that something is before something. If you want to learn them, feel free to send message to my WhatsApp number in the description and comments. The problem number 23, AMC 10822. It says isosceles trapezoid ABCD has palace sides A, D, and B, C with BC less than AD and AB equal to CD. Okay. There is a point P in the plane uh, such that PA is 1, PB is 2. So let me tell you something to find approximately a good place for P. If you draw, uh, the, let me tell you, the, we call it perpendicular by sector, each point here is equal to B and A. So because PB is 2 greater than this, so P should be below this line. And if you draw perpendicular by sector of CD, um, because PC is 3, PB is P3, PC3, PD4, PD is greater, it should be on top of this line. So let's consider, for example, this point. Okay, it's on the plane. It doesn't say that it is inside, but it's on the plane. So let's draw this one. Let me just move it a little here. PA this, PB this, PC this, PD this. Okay, so it will be 1, it will be 2, it will be 3, it will be 4. And we want to find BC over AD. So let's consider, for example, it is X, BC over AD. Mm -hmm. We can say what? When we have isosceles triangle, two lines are important. It's so much important to draw the heights. You will understand why. Because if you draw this, for example, it is X, then we conclude it's in trapezoid, it's useful drawing heights, especially in isosceles trapezoid, because then it is Y, it is Y, because these two triangles are congruent. So A D is X plus 2Y. So we can say that we want to find the ratio of X over x plus 2, y is what? Now, here because we have this length 1, 2, 3, 4, we can use Pythagorean theorem again, as I said in the, my video before the exam, ASC exam, to pay attention to Pythagorean theorem. So if we draw the altitude here and here, let's call this one p, we can say 1 is squared. Let me call this one t, let me call this one l. If we use Pythagorean theorem in ATP, Pythagorean theorem in triangle ATP, you will see, let me first tell you in a triangle and then use that. So let me draw this one. Let's call this part H, this part X, this part Y, this part Z, this part T. Oh, because we have X and Y, let's consider it is. For example, A, it is B. So if it is Pythagorean theorem on the left side, it will be Z squared equal to A squared plus H squared. In right triangle, in this part, T squared equal to B squared plus H squared. So if you subtract Z squared minus T squared equal to A squared minus B squared, it's so much useful using two Pythagorean theorem. Z squared minus T squared equal to A squared minus B squared. So, in, we don't need to do this because we call, for example, this one lemma 1. By lemma 1, I can say, look, let's consider this part. Now, let's do something. Let's erase this x. I consider it is r 
for example, it is P, then this part will be R plus, we call it Y, R plus Y. And this part will be P plus Y. And then, because if you draw like this, it is perpendicular. By lemma 1, I can say R squared minus P squared equal to 2 squared minus 3 squared. Exactly. If you use Pythagorean in these two triangles, you will reach the same result like lemma 1. And also, R plus Y squared minus P plus Y squared equal to 1 squared minus 4 squared. So, if we simplify, the first line is R squared minus P squared is 4 minus 9, which is negative 5. In this one, it will be r squared plus y squared plus 2ry minus p squared plus y squared plus 2py equal to 1 squared minus 4 squared, which will be 1 minus 16 minus 50. y squared, y squared will be cancelled, so r squared minus p squared will be negative 5 here. So, we conclude negative 5 plus 2y r minus p equal to negative 50. Now here. Negative 5, if you take this to left hand side, this to right hand side, negative 5 plus 15 is 10. And 2y, p minus r, because we should negative, constant negative of this. If you divide by 2, y times p minus r equal to 5. Now the problem says, we want what? We want, let's go to top part. Okay, it says we want x, which is r plus p, which is bc, over ad. ad is what? r plus p plus 2y. Okay. Now, here, r plus p, r plus p plus 2y. Okay. Okay, so let's calculate. I consider first reciprocal of this. So I want to find this. It is our answer. One over our answer is r plus p plus 2y over r plus p. If we divide r plus p over r plus p, it will be 1 plus 2y over r plus p. From this part, we conclude y equal to 5 over p minus r. And here I can say y plus 2, y will be 5 over p minus r times 1 over r plus p. So it will be 1 plus 10 over p squared minus r squared. Now, we know r squared minus p squared is negative 5, so it will be 5. So it will be 1 plus 10 over 2, which will be 1 plus, uh, I'm sorry, sorry, 10 over 5, which will be 1 over plus 10 over 5, which is 1 plus 2, and equal to 3. So it was 1 over answer. So answer will be 1 over 3. Okay, so it will be B. So here we've used Pythagorean theorem here, and we've not used formula, but this idea was useful. That used two Pythagorean theorem in many problems of AMC, also AME. Using two Pythagorean theorem in adjacent triangles is useful. And we also use it in Carnot's theorem. To prove three lines are concurrent. If you want to learn them, important ideas and formulas, as I said before, feel free to send a message to my WhatsApp number in the description comments. AMC 10A 2022, problem number 24. How many strings of length 5 form from the digits 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 are there such that for each J belongs to 1, 2, 3, 4, at least J of the digits are less than J. For example, it says 0, 2, 2, 1, 4 satisfies this condition because it contains, look, if j is 1, at least one of them should be less than 1, 0. At least two of them should be less than uh, 2, 0, 1. At least three of them should be less than 3. Four of them less than 3, so it is at least 3. And at least four of them less than 4, 1, 2, 2, 0, yes. But it says 2, 3, 4, 0, 4 doesn't satisfy why. Because two of them should be less than two, but only zero is less than two. And one of them is less than two. Okay. And it says how many strings of length five form from the digits this satisfy. Now, for solving this, we should consider different cases. 
Before the exam, exactly the day before AMC, I released a video. In that video, I said, considering cases, I solved problems exactly similar to this. It doesn't have formula, these types of problem. And you should consider cases. You should find what prop one property. And you can find infinitely many solutions to consider different property. For example, here, I consider the number of, let's say, the number of zeros. I say. The number of zeros because the length is five. Let me five, four, three, two, and one. If you have five zeros, only one string is good. Zero, 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 and the answer is one. If you have four zeros, zero, zero, ah. Uh, let's write the condition. It says, and uh, at least j of these elements are less than j. So if j is one, one, at least one of them should be less than one, should be zero. So n of zero should be at least one. And then if j is two, at least two of them digits are less than two. So zero and one that are less than two, the number of them should be at least two. The conditions are this. n of zero, if j is three, plus n of one plus n of two. Let me move it to right below this. 3 and n of 0 plus n of 1 plus n of 2 plus n of 3 for j when equal to 4, it should be at least 4. So we have these four conditions. Now, if we have four zeros, then all these conditions will be satisfied. So we have four zeros and other term. But these four zeros, you say 5, choose 4 for these four zeros. And the other term can be 1, 2, 3, or 4. Because the terms, the digits are this. So... 5 choose 4 times 4, which is 5 times 4, 20. If you have three zeros, the first condition, second condition, third condition will be satisfied. So I say first 5 choose 3. Now, in this case, first condition is okay, second okay, third okay, and then I want to calculate all cases minus bad cases. I say 3 of the elements are 0. 3 or 0. We have two other elements. They can be 1, 2, 3, 4. So I say here 4 is squared, but the bad case is what? If this condition is not satisfied, it means what? N0, N0 is 3 in this case. So if it is not greater than equal 4, it means N of 1 is 0, N of 2 is 0, N of 3 is 0. It means we don't have other elements. And the only bad case when we have three zeros is three zeros and two fours. So we say minus one case only. So it will be 5 choose 3. If you calculate it's 10, 16 minus 5, 15. It will be 150. Okay, so let me erase the cases that we worked on. N of 0 is 3. So now in this case, we have two zeros, okay? Two zeros. We have three other elements. Because we have two zeros, this first... Two conditions are satisfied, and we say 5 choose 2 times. These three elements, again, I want to calculate and subtract the bad cases. I say we have 4 cubed, and then the bad cases are what? If first condition is not satisfied, let's consider these two cases. If... Let's see. N of 0 is 2. If first condition is bad, let's subtract that. So it means that it should be 0, it should be 0. So N of 1 should be 0, N of 2 should be 0. So the other two elements can only be 3 and 4, all the three elements. So say 2 to the 2 cubed. Now I want to calculate the number of bad cases of this one that it is bad and it is good because I've calculated the bad cases of this condition. So if it is good and it is bad, so this part, because it is good, it is at least three, but it cannot be four or more. It should be exactly three and this part has to be zero. So n of zero is what? n of zero is two. So one of them should be one. So it means that we have 1, 1 or 1, 2. We don't have 3. And the others should be 4. So how many 4 do we have now? N of 4. 
here three we have here zero and a four should be two okay so we subtract we should select n of one is one or n of two is one you multiply by two of course one of them is one one of them zero and then you selected we want one or two you should place them in one of these three places three choose one and then the other two places should be four so it will be one both of them should be same and it should be four and five choose two is ten times 64 minus 8 minus 6 it will be negative 14 it will be 10 times 50 which will be 500 okay now as you can see when the number of zeros will be decreased the way we want to solve will be harder now the last is when we have one zero so when we have one zero, so only first condition is satisfied and it's hard to check directly. So when you see, when you are considering cases and you will see, okay, one case is hard a little, try to divide it to different cases by again considering another property like what? So here look, I say I have one zero, so I say five choose one times now i consider n of one is what n of one can be four can be three can be two can be one can it be zero because n of zero is one in this case if n of one be zero then the second condition won't be satisfied so we should consider these four cases in this case you say okay all of them should be 1. So we have 1, 0, and all of them should be 1. So 5 choose 1, which will be 5 here. Now, we have 3 1s. When we have 3 1s and other elements, so when we have 3 1s, the first condition is satisfied because n0 is 1. Second condition, also third condition, because n0 plus n1 is 4. Also fourth condition will be satisfied. So here I say, I have four places. I should select four, two, three, four ones, and the other one can be two or three or four times three. So we have five times four, 20 times three, six. Okay. Now we have two ones. Let's check. When we have two ones, so n of zero plus n of two is three. So the first three conditions are satisfied. So let's see. I say 4 choose 2 for these two ones times. Here, I say the other two elements, I say they can be 2 or 3 or 4, 3 squared minus. The bad case is what? If it doesn't satisfy 4, so it should be 3. So because n0, n1, n2 is at least 3, so we conclude it should be equal to 3. And n0, n3 should be 0. And n1 plus n2 is, so let's see what happens. n0, n0 we know is 1 in this case. n1 is 2, so it should be 3. n2 should be 0. n3 also should be 0 in this case. And n4 should be what? n4 should be and 4 should be 2. Let me explain again this part. Look here, we want to consider bad cases that we fill these two things. We know first three conditions are satisfied. If fourth condition doesn't satisfy, n0, 1, n1, 2. If n2 be greater than 0, then fourth condition will be satisfied. So n2 should be 0, n3 also should be 0. So the two elements, other two elements can only be filled by four in the bad case. So it will be one. So it will be five times four choose to six, 30, 30 times eight, 240. Now it's the time to check last case. Let's erase. Okay. We have one, 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 zero. So we have one, zero, one, one. 
Okay, so on because we've calculated also the number of cases that zero is in what place, I say one, and we want to fill the other three. So it will be four, choose one. First condition is satisfied, the second condition is satisfied. So we say we have three other cases. The bad, the, the all cases you can fill with two, three, four. So three cubed minus. If the first one be bad, let me again copy these two conditions. Okay, if here these three places be bad, if the first condition is bad, let's subtract that first. So n0 we know is 1, n1 is 1, so n2 should be 0. Because if n2 is greater than 0, this condition will be good. So minus, so we don't have n2, so we can only fill with 3 and 4, so minus 2 cubed. Now, minus the bad case, the second bad case, is that this condition is satisfied, but this condition is not satisfied. So, n0 is 1, n1 is 1, because this condition is not satisfied, means some of them is not 4, so, and some of them is at least 3, so n2 has to be 1. So, n0, 1, n2, 1, n1, 1, n2, 1, n3, 0. And, in this case, so, we say n of 2 is 1, so for 2 you say 3 choose 1, and the others should be 4. And here it will be 27 minus 8, 19, minus 3, 16, 4 times 16, 64. 64 times 5 here will be 5 times 64 is 320. Okay, so let's add up the numbers here. We have 1 plus 20. 1 plus 20 plus 150 plus 500 plus 5 next one 60 plus 240 plus 320 okay let's consider the sum it will be 321 so 500 plus 300 will be 800 800 plus this will be 1,120. And then what numbers are left? This 5, this 150, this. 150 plus this 171 plus 5, 176. If we add, it will be 6, 279. 1 plus 1, 2, 1296. So let's check. It will be 1296E. If you want to learn, look, these types of problems are useful also in Harvard, MIT Math Tournament, HMMT, HMT, AMC, BMO, AME, that you should consider different cases. Also, I release before the exam these types of problems because it's useful. And in many years, we will see these types of problems. If you want to learn how to solve this problem, how to find the property, all these things, feel free, as I said before, to send a message to my WhatsApp number in the description. AMC 10A 2022, problem number 25, last problem. It says, let R, S, and T be squares that have vertices and lattice points, points whose coordinates are both integers. In the coordinate plane together with their interiors. The bottom edge of each square is on the x-axis. The left edge, so let me show you like this. The left edge of R here or the right side or the right and the right edge of S on the Y axis. So here and R contains 9 over 4 as many lattice points as those S. Okay for calculating this let's consider this side is the length is R. So, inside this, how many lattice points are there? R minus 1 squared. How, for example, look, if you have this, the length is 2. How many points are there? 1 point. If the length is 3, you can see how many points are there? 2 squared. Okay. Now it says 9. Okay, it says... R contains 9 over 4 as many lattice points as those S. So, R minus 1 squared equal to 9 over 4 
S minus 1 squared. Suppose the length here is S. And the length here is T. Let's write it like this. Okay. Now it says the top two vertices of T are in this R union S and T contains one over four of the lattice points contained in R union S. Okay, so it says T contains one over four. So T contains how many points? T minus one squared. One over four of the lattice points contains in R union S. R union S is what? R has R minus 1 squared, S has S minus 1 squared, but we have some lattice points in common. We've calculated them more than once. Let's see, do we have? I prefer to consider also these points. Look, it depends on the problem. And for example, for this one with length 2, I consider 3 squared lattice points. For this one, with three points, you should explain if it was in a full solution exam. And we saw if it means, for example, other things, you can easily change your solution. So, for example, for this one, I consider four squared. So let's do something. It will be r plus one square lattice points. And if I do this, let's write this again. The first one, r contains, r contains how many lattice points? Also on perimeter r plus 1 squared 9 over 4 as many lattice points as s does s plus 1 squared and then the next one uh, t contains t contains how many t plus 1 squared 1 over 4 of the lattice point contains is r union s r is r plus 1 squared s is s plus 1 squared and the Intersection is S plus 1. You should subtract this because we've calculated this more than once. And uh, it is this. And the next thing, so let's copy these two equations. Okay, the fraction of lattice points in S that are in S intersect T. So let's see the figure. Okay. Uh, the fraction of lattice points in S that are in S intersect T. So, look like S intersect T. If I consider this part as A, so it will be A plus 1 squared. Let me see. Ah, uh, no, no. A plus 1 times T plus 1 because it, the intersection is this. And it will be A plus 1 times T plus 1. And let me write a plus 1 times t plus 1 over the fraction in s. So it is over s plus 1 squared equal to 27 times. 27 times the fraction of lattice points in R that are in R union intersect T. R intersect, intersect T will be this part and it will be t plus 1 times t minus a, so because the length here is t, it is t minus a plus 1, times t minus a plus 1, all over in r, which is r plus 1 squared. And then it says, what is the minimum value of the edge length of r plus the edge length of s plus the edge length of t? So we have these three equations and we want to find the minimum R, S, and T, sum of them. So here, if we multiply by 4, 4 times R plus 1 squared equal to 9 times S plus 1 squared. And if we take a square root, it will be 2 times R plus 1, which equal to 3 times S plus 1. And I can replace, I can say R plus 1 is, <laughs> let's again divide 3 over 2. At first, we could also consider square root. 3 over 2 S plus 1. Now, here also, let's simplify t plus 1 from both sides. And in second equation, I replace r plus 1 squared with 9 over 4 s plus 1 squared. So it will be 1 over 4, 9 over 4 s plus 1 squared plus s plus 1 squared minus s plus 1. Okay, now here, if we 
let's simplify also this one. I know that r plus 1 squared is 9 over 4 s plus 1 squared, so we can say 27 times. 4 over 9 times s plus 1 squared t minus a plus 1. We cancel s plus 1 squared and we conclude 293. So a plus 1 will be 12 times t minus a plus 1 which will be 12t minus 12a plus 12. So 13a equal to 12t plus 11. Now let's simplify this part. Uh, if we multiply both sides by 16, so left side is 16t plus 1 squared, right side will be 9 times s plus 1 squared, plus 4 times s plus 1 squared, minus 16 over 4, which will be minus 4 times s plus. So here 9 plus 4 is 13 times s plus 1 squared, minus 4 times s plus 1. Now we can conclude 16 times t plus 1 squared equal to s plus 1 times 13s minus 4, 13s, plus 13 minus 4, it, it will be 9. Now, product of these two terms is 16t plus 1 squared. It's a perfect square. Now, when you see product of two terms equal to a perfect square, it's one good idea is to consider their GCD. So let's consider the GCD of s plus 1 and 13s plus 9 as d. So d divides s plus 1, d divides 13s plus 9. So if you multiply by 13, d divides 13s plus 13. And if you subtract, d divides 4. So d will be 1 or 2 or 4. Now, if d is 1 and 4, both of them should be perfect square. So case 1. If d is 1 or 4, s plus 1 should be a perfect square, 13 s plus 1, 9 also should be a perfect square. In case 2, if d is 2, then s plus 1 should be 2x squared, and also 13 s plus 1, 9 should be 2, for example, y squared. Now, let's consider first this case. From here, we conclude s equal to x squared minus 1. And if you replace s with x squared minus 1, 13 x squared minus 1 plus 9 equal to y squared. So 13 x squared minus y squared equal to negative 13 minus plus 9, negative 4, it will be 4. If you consider this case, s will be 2x squared minus 1. And if you replace it here, 13 times 2x squared minus 1 plus 9 equal to 2y squared. So 13, 26 x squared minus 13 plus 9 minus 4 equal to 2y squared. So 13 x squared minus 2y squared equal to minus y squared. If you divide by 2 and take 2y squared to left hand side, it will be y squared. Negative 4 to right hand side, it will be 4. Divide by 2 will be 2. Now, if you consider y squared mod 13 is what here. So at first, let's consider it in general. For example, z mod 13 can be what numbers let's write it can be 0 plus minus 1 plus minus 2 plus minus 3 if you want to learn how to work with modular like this have to understand when to consider this, these types of things and solve harder problems feel free to send message to my whatsapp number in the description and comments okay plus minus 5 plus minus 6 so z squared will be 0 1 4 9 16 which will be 3 25, which will be 12, and 36, which will be 10. So we have these cases. And now, in this case, for example, if you consider mod 13, negative y squared, mod 13 is 2. Because 13x squared is 0. So y squared is negative 2, which is 11 mod 13. So we will see it is impossible. So we don't need to check this case. Now, here, 
If we cancel mod 13, negative y squared is 4 mod 13. So y squared is negative 4, which is 9 mod 13. And we will see the only possible case to reach 3 is this. So we conclude y is plus minus 3, or we can say plus 3 and 13 minus 3, 10 mod 13. So we should check only these y's. And here we try to find a minimum y because if y will be maximum, then s will be for maximum and other things will be greater. If x be increased, then s plus 1 will be increased. 13s plus 9 will be increased. Then t will be increased. And then also if s will be increased, r will be increased here. So we want to find minimum y. So. But look, if you want to check y1, y2, y3, let me write the main equation. 13x squared minus y squared equal to 4. If you want to check y1, 2, 3, you should check a lot of cases. But with this modula, you need to only check these types of numbers. So here I say, okay, 13x squared, or let me tell you this. x squared is y squared plus 4 over 13. And y can be what numbers? y is 3, if it is 3, 10, 13 plus 3, 16, 13 plus 10, 23, 13 plus 6, 29, 13 plus 6, 36, and so on. We should check these numbers. So, here, x squared will be 9 plus 4, 13 over 13, 1. So, in this case, x is 1. Uh -huh. S is what? S is x squared minus 1. So, in this case, S will be zero and it's not possible because in the problem it says we have lattice points, these points SD on constant inside, and we have this square, so the length is not zero. Now it's back, and if you want to say also S zero, you will see that here it will be one. 9 over 4, and r plus 1 will be 3 over 2, and r will be a fraction, but it's integer. So it is impossible. If you consider 10, 10 is squared, 100 plus 4, 104, over 13 is 8. So 8 is not x squared. The next one, if you replace y with 16, it will be 256 y squared plus 4, 260 over 13, 20. 20 is not perfect squared. 23 squared is 529. 529 plus 4 is 533. If you divide 533 by 13, it will be 41. And it's not perfect square. If you answer 29, 29 squared is 841. If you add by 4, it will be 845. And if you divide by 13, it will be 65. Again, it's not a perfect square. If you answer 36, 30 square, 36 square is 11296. Plus 4 will be 1,300, 1, and if you divide by 13, it will be 100, and that's good. In this case, x will be 10. And because s is x squared minus 1 is 100 minus 1, 99. And now, r plus 1 is s 3 over 2 s plus 1. r plus 1 is 3 over 2 s plus 1 which is 150, 150, so r will be 150 minus 1, 149, and the last part, t. Let's consider 40, 16 t plus 1 squared, s is 99, and it will be 113 times 99 plus 9. 13 times 100 is 1,300, and you should subtract 13 plus 9, negative 4, it will be 1, 2, 9, 6, 36 is squared. So, if we consider square root, it will be 4 times t plus 1, will be 20, will be 10 times 36. And if you divide by 4, it will be 90, it will be, it will be 9, 90, so t will be 89. So let me write this. T here will be 89. If you add these numbers, R plus S plus T, 
It is 99. No, 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 no. R is 149. S is 99. It is 89. So if we write these numbers on top of each other, 99 plus 89, it's 27. It's 2, 6, 15, 23. And it's 2. And it will be 337. And if we check, 337 is this. But the problem says 340. So maybe the problem means, for example, if we have this 2, we consider the length is 1. So maybe it considers the points also here. It means the length here, for example, 2. Then if you add to each of them plus 1 to r plus 1 to t plus 1 to s plus 1, it will be this choice. So if the problem is explained completely, we will see it is what. And if um, I wanted to change something in the solution, but the idea is exactly this. Number theory changing the problem into mathematics formulas. If I wanted to say something more, you can check description. I explain if something was necessary to explain. And uh, please don't forget to subscribe. If you want to learn more ideas that are useful in AMC, AME, Next Steps, and also USAMO, Next Levels, IMO, or other Olympiads, for example, Hong Kong, Philippines, Singapore, British, BMO1, BMO2, if you want to learn important things, or also if you want to work on applying to top universities, want to work on a good CV, have a good CV for applying in Stanford. You can also prepare yourself for summer camps like SUMAC Ross. They are prestigious. SUMAC is for Stanford. And also Awesome Math. If you want to prepare for them, feel free to send message to my WhatsApp number. I will tell you the things that are useful in all math exams. It depends on the math exam you want to participate. Okay. So I've explained these problems before each exam. If I had time, I would release ideas that are useful in that exam. And like this exam, you will see many of the ideas I told you. We had this formula, how to work with geometric problems. They were useful in this problem. Okay. So please don't forget to subscribe, turn on notification, and like the video. After this, I will also release AMC 12A problems. After that, after the exam of 10B, 12B, I will also explain the problems and solutions of 10b 12b okay so have a great day see you next time thanks for watching this video and bye bye we are gonna solve 25 problems of amc 10a 2022 american mathematics competitions and before the exam i release some ideas and i want to show you how useful the ideas in my preparation videos were so let's start from problem number one in problem number one let's see 